have this bench. Um, I went out thrifting with my daughter. And it's got, these legs are real wood, but this is that pressed board. So I may end up changing that to actual wood, but somebody had it, looks like in their booth for 60 bucks. And I picked it up for $2 and actually it was half off that day. So $1 is all I have into this so far. So we'll give it a paint job and recover it and make it like a nice piano bench or foyer bench or something fun out of it. So let's get into these projects and see what we can do. Okay, so I went ahead and just took off the top of the bench and I'm just going to take everything apart because of that particle board. I'm going to go ahead and you can see there, there's some wood on the side there. I went ahead and just got some extra wood that I had laying around and cut it to the same length. Um, just using my chop saw here. And apparently you can see <laughs> it starts to smoke. So I think I need to change the blade on that. <laughs> so anyway, just got those pieces all cut and just putting it all back together before we paint. Just using all the same hardware um, made it easy just to place it back together. And then today we're going to be using the Sweet Pick and Smoke paint in the color Navy Blues. Um, I love milk paint because it just gives a nice velvety smooth finish. And not always does it crackle and chip and paint, you know, chip away, but you can get a really, really nice uh, finish. So you just take one part of the powder paint to one part water and stir it up really well. I'm using a whisk right here, but in a second you'll see that it's not getting all the way down because the cup is tapered. It's not getting all the way down to the very bottom. So I switch over to a craft stick to try and get that dust around the bottom out and mixed in with the rest of the water right there. And eventually I move on to my immersion blender because I want this finish to have a really nice smooth surface. And so um, when you use your immersion blender, it blends it a lot better and you don't get as many chunks in it. So this is the consistency I was looking for, just kind of like a thick uh, milk consistency, creamer type, I guess. So I went ahead and put two coats on. I did not, I just let it dry normal in between. And then now we're moving on to the top part. So I'm just gonna remove that cover, that beautiful, beautiful cover. <laughs> Uh, but I end up keeping it just as a template and I have some drop cloth that I have been using on some proje projects lately and so I'm trying to use that up. So I'm just going to use this template, cut it out, and then um, we're going to be stamping on it with some IOD stamps. Okay, so this Heat and Bond Ultra Hold I bought to try and make a, a really nice, what do you call it, um, folded over edge, I guess, for when I go to staple it on. And I'm telling you what, I was not impressed. I don't know if it's because the fabric was thick, but it did not work. So this is the Iron Orchid stamp called Rural Scenes. It's, I believe, one of their new ones from the spring release, and it's got two separate stamps on it so you can see here I just love that old country feel kind of like the twall here's the other one it's got a lot of different trees and people fishing things like that so we're gonna do this to the fabric all the way across and whenever you have a new IOD stamp you always remove the plastic and then you take a 220 grit sandpaper and lightly go over each of the stamps I go one way and the other way and that's going to give that stamp some grip to adhere to the, um, the ink. So it makes it a lot easier to stamp. And when you're stamping on fabric, you want to make sure to use a lot of the liquid um, just so that it kind of soaks in. So today we're going to be using IOD's China Blue. 
So yeah, I'm going to saturate these stamps quite a bit. And that's going to allow that to soak into the fabric and come out nice and crisp. And now when you go to stamp it, you want to kind of hover over the top where you want to put it. And then when you find the, the perfect spot, you're going to place it down and hold it with one hand while you use the other hand to press the stamp into the fabric. You can see here I'm just holding it there with my left hand, pressing down with my right. And then I'm going to switch. I'll hold it down and then press the other side. And then I'm going to take my fingertips and just lightly rub on each of the stamps like this right here. You can see just to get all of that specific detail because they are totally detailed. When you pull this up, you'll see there's a lot of little intricate parts to these stamps too. And look at how beautiful that turns out. It's just so awesome. So I'm just going to kind of switch back and forth between these stamps to fill up that whole fabric and then we'll move on to sewing. I'm not a huge sewer. Uh, I can sew a straight line pretty much. Don't even know why I own a sewing machine. But in these cases, it can come out pretty cool. See that detail from those stamps? It's just so pretty. Um, so I'm gonna go, actually, we're gonna go back a step. Um, we want to heat set that ink into the fabric. So I have my Cricut at 305 for 30 seconds. If you don't have a Cricut press, that's okay. You can use a normal iron. Um, just have it at medium high heat. And then you want to do the front side and the back side. And then I went with Scotch Guard to keep that fabric from, you know, kind of stain block it. Keep it nice and clean. Easy to clean up anyway. And then I'm going to go back over my paint job with the 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out. And this is a Sweet Pickens top coat um, in matte finish. So it's designed to go over milk paint. And it just, it makes that color just kind of pop, deepens that blue color. And that's gonna actually match really well with that China Blue IOD ink. So now for the top, what we're going to use is the Elmer's multi-purpose glue. And I just spray it on there, put the pad down just to help it stay in the spot that it needs to be when I go to put the top back on. And here's where we're going to sew. So I'm going to just take those pieces and go opposite ends or stamped end to stamped end, I should say, and then just make it in a straight line. And I'm going to take it down about three quarters of the way with my pins and I'm only going to sew to that far so that when it goes over the cushion that's going to be the sewn part but when I go to staple it I can actually wrap it kind of like a present underneath and you'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about. So it just goes about three quarters of the way down. So I'm gonna do all those at those ends the same way, and then here comes the sewing machine. So we'll just sew down to that that mark, that three quarter mark, on every corner, and then you'll see that it looks it actually looks pretty professional <laughs> for an amateur. Um, that's why I did it. They had it the same way with their piece that they had originally on there, so I thought it looked really nice. So now it's time to attach the fabric. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on there and then flip it over. Make sure everything's nice and tight before I staple it on. And 
This is me hoping and praying that it actually works out. Because, <laughs> like I said, I'm not a, a professional sewer by any means. Yay, it worked. So here you can see, I'm going to go start with the long end. And we're just going to staple that down. And then I'm going to go to the opposite end so that I can keep the fabric tight. Staple that side down. And then we'll go to the ends. And I kind of fold it like a Christmas present. And it turned out great. It's got um, a couple of faded areas, but that's okay. It just adds to the character of the piece. And now it's time to attach the base. So again, I'm just gonna use the same hardware that came with it. Just screw them in. It was super simple. And this piece just turned out really, really nice. Be great for like an entryway or even a piano bench. Um, but yeah, for one dollar into this, I think that was a pretty good deal. You can see there is some crackling that happened from that milk paint, but it didn't chip, so that's that's pretty cool. So tell me what you guys think. Um, got more pro projects coming up, but I'm gonna be gone for about a week or so, so hopefully I can get something out when I come back. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Bye.